<laughs> I'm like a kid in a candy store, except when I was a kid, I went to car dealerships. Hello, and welcome to another episode. My name is Tamir, and I have a YouTube channel, and I talk about car salesmen and car dealerships, and I do car reviews on odd vehicles, like the one behind me, which happens to be one vehicle that I'm really excited to review. And it is weird, and it is cool, and it's one of my dream cars. This is a 1991 Mitsubishi Delica. It's currently available for sale today, everywhere, except the United States. It didn't sell well here for some reason, and today, I'm going to take you around the vehicle and show you why. Now, I've borrowed this particular 1991 Mitsubishi Delica from a viewer here in the Seattle area who lives up in Edmonds, Washington, about 20 minutes north of Seattle proper. This particular Delica was an imported example, which most of them are imported now, but to be clear, the Delica was actually available for sale in the United States from 1987 until 1991. First, I'm going to give you a brief history of the Mitsubishi Delica and its sales, and then I'm going to talk about its brief history in the United States, and I'm going to do a complete walk around of the Mitsubishi Delica and point out its oddities. There are many of them. And we're going to answer the important question, is this really cool van sailproof? Stay tuned to find out. The Mitsubishi Delica started sales back in 1968 in the Japanese and Indonesian markets. It was sold as an inexpensive commercial pickup truck or van and it was massively successful. The body style remained until 1979 when it got its first refresh. Once the vehicle was refreshed, it was exported to almost every single market in the world with the exception of the United States. 1986 rolls around and for the 1987 model year, the Mitsubishi Delica was finally brought to the United States for sale. However, it didn't sell very well here and in 1991, they discontinued sales here and the body style continued around the world until 1994. The Delica is still sold brand new to this day around the world and it's undergone two major redesigns since it stopped selling in the United States in 1991. However, why did it not sell well here? I'll get to that in a little bit. Now back to the Delica. I'm going to start my review of the 1991 Mitsubishi Delica in the front and I would like to point out the grill guard. This thing is absolutely massive. It is made out of metal and it reminds me a bit of a jungle gym because it's so big and it covers almost the entire front end of the car. Also in the front of the Mitsubishi Delica, I would like to point out these fog lights. These fog lights are kind of an amber color, which are completely different from the actual color of the headlights, and it really gives the Delica a distinct and actually pretty off-road rugged look, and I really like it. Next on our walk around of the Mitsubishi Delica, also in the front, we're going to talk about the headlights a little bit. There's nothing especially important about the headlights or especially quirky. However, if you look right next to the headlight, there are a couple of vents, which these vents are here just for style. Unfortunately, they are not real vents. And you know how I feel about fake vents. They were a thing back in 1991, too. Next in the front of the Mitsubishi Delica, we have to talk about the hood. It's non-existent. There's a body panel right here that's made out of metal, and normally where a hood goes, it's a piece that opens up, and you can see inside the engine, or if it's a mid-engine car, you can see where some radiators are, like the Honda Beat that I previously reviewed. On the Mitsubishi Delica, it's just a flat body panel, and it doesn't open. Also in the front of the Delica, and still pertaining to the piece where a hood would normally go, we are going to dress the elephant in the room, which is this vehicle does have four-wheel drive, but I would like to point out the little plastic piece to the left that is the nozzle which has the windshield spray to clean off your windshield. I have never seen a nozzle of this stature or size. It's pretty incredible. Next on our walk around of the Mitsubishi Delica, I would like to point out the running boards. These running boards aren't actually located on the side of the vehicle. They're actually located in the front and they're located in an area that seems a little bit counterintuitive. However, these running boards actually work quite well for getting inside of the vehicle because of the placement of the wheels and the doors on the vehicle. Oh, but the front running board located in front of the wheel wasn't enough. There is actually a set of side running boards too to get in through the side doors. 
Next, we have to talk about the side mirrors on the Mitsubishi Delica. Now, if you take a look on the driver's side, the side mirror is relatively normal. It is actually quite vertical as opposed to horizontal like most side mirrors are, but we really have to take a look on the passenger side because that mirror extends out absolutely enormously. And I mean, just look at the extender on that mirror. Just look at how far out it comes so that you can get a better view of the Delica while you're driving. I mean, it's so long, you could practically hang a clothesline from there. And I'm sure a few Delica owners out there have actually tried it. Now, most trucks or vehicles with a longer pickup bed or that are longer in general will typically have mirrors that do extend out a little bit further. It is a completely different story in the Delica and it's very one-sided. And while we're on the topic of mirrors with the Mitsubishi Delica, I have to point out this back mirror on the back side of the vehicle. Now, for the longest time, I always saw pictures of Delicas with this thing that was sticking out and I never knew what it was. It is, in fact, a mirror. And the reason for it is it's actually the 1980s and 1990s version of a backup camera. It's designed to help give you a better view when you're backing up your vehicle because below the glass, you can't see very well and it is a rather high positioned vehicle. So backup cameras have existed for a long time. They just never made it mandatory in the United States until 2018 when it was digital and expensive. Next, we move to the back of the Mitsubishi Delica where I will point out the step stool on the back. So there were two that were in the front that were very oddly positioned. There were two little ones that were on the side and there was one in the back which is also oddly positioned. Here's what I mean. Oh, it actually fits your foot. Whoa. Also in the back of the Delica, this walk around wouldn't be complete if we didn't talk about the bar below where the tow hitch goes. This bar is currently just a bar that's an accessory bar that can be changed out for different styles of tow hitches. The most common tow hitch, which is not equipped on this Delica, is one that actually has three receiving ends to it. So it'll have three little squares that you can attach different size or style trailers to, which is pretty darn cool. Next, also located in the back of the Mitsubishi Delica, is the light bar, and I didn't realize this until the owner pointed it out to me. The letters that say Delica on the back do actually light up. Unfortunately for this particular vehicle, it doesn't work at the moment, so I can't demonstrate. Either way, light bars from the 1980s are coming back in style pretty strong in new vehicles, and that makes the Delica even more cool. So now we've covered some of the oddities of the Mitsubishi Delica on the outside. Now let's move on to the inside where there's a lot more of them in here. Here's what I mean. First, I would like to point out on the passenger seat, which I'm currently sitting on, and right down here, there's a handle that you can hold on to that I've never seen in any other car before. Normally, there's a handle that's located on the A-pillar, which this particular vehicle has, and they have those same handles in the back seats as well, but I've never seen it located right next to the center console. That's pretty weird and pretty cool. Also in the front of the Mitsubishi Delica, I would like to point out there's an altometer, as well as a angle of approach, kind of like you see in an airplane. Next on the inside of the Mitsubishi Delica, we have to talk about the wipers. Now, I realize the wipers are on the outside of the vehicle. What I'm actually talking about is the wiper controls. If you'll take a look on the steering wheel, there is a wiper stock like normal. However, normally on the stock, you can twist a piece at the end to actually turn on a back wiper, which this vehicle does have. On this one, it's actually a whole separate switch which is located right next to the gauge cluster. Take a look at this. Weird. Also on the inside of the Mitsubishi Delica, we have to talk about the shifter. The shifter is absolutely massive. This particular vehicle is equipped with an automatic transmission. They did have a manual transmission available, but what I love about the shifter is in big letters, it says up top that it is a four speed automatic. Now that is the height of technology for the 1990s. Next, we're gonna be going into the back seats of the Delica where it still gets even weirder. Now, the Delica does have a sliding door on one of the sides of the vehicle, which isn't especially interesting for a vehicle of this era, but what is really interesting is in the back, I noticed that there was running gear ahead of the seats. This running gear actually creates this really cool degree of separation between the front seats and the back seats. So if you have children, you have a little natural barrier slash obstacle for them, which makes it more difficult to access their parents. Not only that, but if you have older people sitting in the back, it makes for a great footrest so they can relax in your Mitsubishi Delica. Also, while we're in the subject of in the back, I thought it would be a good time to actually show you where the engine is located, since I mentioned the running gear was actually in front of the two back seats. Allow me to demonstrate right here. 
So there's a special key that comes with the tools for the spare tire that you use to unlock and tilt up the front seat. And as you can see, the engine and battery and running gear is all located right here. Unusual. Now there are a couple of features that this Delica does not have that I would like to point out that there are would have been's. One of them is that there was a cool glass panoramic moonroof available on this car back in the 1990s. Now that's a luxury feature that a lot of luxury cars have today. The other feature that this particular one doesn't have is a roof rack. It actually became well known with the Volkswagen Vanagon Westphalia. It's a very similar roof rack and you could attach various cargo boxes or other accessories like an awning or a tent or something like that, which is pretty darn cool for this camper van. Next, we're on to the inside in the back seats of the Mitsubishi Delica, and I would like to point out the rails that are above the windows. These rails are for little curtains that you can set up so you can have some privacy in the back seat of the Delica. I wonder what anyone would want to do in the back seat of their Mitsubishi Delica. Also, what I would like to point out inside the Mitsubishi Delica's back seat is they have their own climate controls back here, which is a really cool feature considering this is a 1980s and 1990s vehicle that was never intended for luxury purposes, and yet modern luxury cars actually have it in their executive class vehicles. You can control your fan speed, and you have a cigarette lighter, and you can control how hot or how cold it gets from the back seat of your Delica. And there you have it. That's a complete overview of the 1991 Mitsubishi Delica, one of my dream cars that I haven't seen for a very long time, especially one in this kind of condition. However, I have to ask the important question, is this car sailproof? To judge whether the Mitsubishi Delica is sailproof or an A car, first we're going to judge its awareness. Around the world, Mitsubishi is a relatively well-known manufacturer, however, they don't advertise a ton, and this particular vehicle was not marketed well when it did come to the United States, so because of this, it gets a 4 out of 10. Next, we're going to judge the Mitsubishi Delica's appearance. Now, I personally really love how weird and quirky this vehicle looks, however, not many people in the world agree with me. It's not especially beautiful like a classic sports car, so because of this, the vehicle gets a 4 out of 10. Next, we move on to amenities, and the Delica is surprisingly well-equipped. It does have four-wheel drive. Some iterations have seating for up to seven people. It's got an available tow hitch. It's got an available roof rack. It's got an available awning and tent and other various toys. It even has rear climate controls and an available panoramic moonroof in the 1980s and 90s, which is pretty darn cool. Now, it is missing some of the modern safety features, and it is missing a couple of luxury features like leather seats or heated seats, and so because of that, the Delica gets a 6 out of 10. Next, we're going to move on to availability. The Delica sold in very small numbers in the United States, so it's tough to find a left-hand drive model. Now, there are plenty of right-hand drive models that are available for import, but you do have to go through the lengthy importation process, so because of this, the Delica gets a 3 out of 10. Finally, we're going to move on to affordability. The Mitsubishi Delica is available for sale regularly, and prices will range anywhere from about $12,000 to $17,000 for a clean example, which actually isn't too crazy. So the challenge is you can't finance one, so because of this, that does knock it down a peg or two, but the score is still relatively good. The Delica gets a 7 out of 10. Add it all up, and the score is 24 out of 50 which isn't too bad, although it is erring on the slightly sale-proof side of the scale. And that's judging the Delica completely objectively. However, if you go back to the 1980s and 1990s when the vehicle was available for sale, it didn't really stand up well against the competition. The Delica competed against vehicles such as the Volkswagen Vanagon Westphalia and later the Volkswagen Eurovan. It also competed against vehicles like the Dodge Grand Caravan, which dominated the market and other Japanese manufacturers that actually had a higher market share, such as Honda and Toyota, had their Sienna and Previa minivans, as well as their Odyssey minivans, all available for sale around the same time. When you compare the Delica to the other vehicles on paper, it is smaller, it is a bit of a weirder body style, and they really tried to go more for the camper van, which the Volkswagen Vanagon completely dominated that market. That and the Delica was only available in certain configurations in the United States. You could only get a 107 horsepower gas engine in the vehicle, which was completely outclassed by the Vanagon, as well as the turbo diesel was not available in the United States, and that's the most popular imported version, which the turbo diesel is the version that I reviewed for this video. So due to the limited configurations available, as well as the other vehicles that outclassed it in the American market, that really explains why the Delica was sale-proof brand new. However, if you were to buy a Delica today, it would do better, although it's not the most A car out there at the same time. 
Do you like my car review videos? If so, please be sure to click my picture right here to subscribe for more sale-proof car reviews. My name is Tamir, and until next time...